everyone. You're watching a Barnstable this morning. I'm Sarah Colvin, and joining me in studio, I welcome our assistant town manager, Mark Ells. Mark, good morning. Hi, Sarah. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Enjoying this unseasonably warm weather. It's a nice way to it, start. It is. November. It can just keep going. Maybe a little cool off at Christmas, maybe. A exactly. <laughs> but stay warm through the winter. Oh, that yes. would be nice. But we'll have to wait and see. So, wanted to talk today. You know, I uh, had the chance to go down to Scudder's Lane in Barnstable Village this this week. Uh, oysters. Uh, recreational oyster season opened hundreds of people down there uh, gathering oysters and it's just an amazing kind of a part of, of our community part of our culture and the, the oysters are so fascinating it really is an interesting part of our ecosystem oh absolutely I mean you know besides the uh, the, the recreation and you know opportunities that we have here in town and our, our natural resources department and our shellfish um, people do such a wonderful job with this program. Um, you know, and, and besides the fact you get to eat them as well once you harvest them, uh, you know, there, there's other values to these oysters, and and we see it across Cape Cod now as one of the, uh, I guess they call them non-traditional solutions to this nitrogen loading uh, problem that we have in our embayments, which is the fact that these are just natural filters. And, you know, they're a wonderful, natural way to um, help to clean up some of the environment out there. So it's, a, uh, it's got a dual purpose. It really does. And yeah. I think that's, that's so fascinating um, that, that here's something that occurs naturally, part of our natural ecosystem that can help solve a problem that we're really looking uh, to, to solve. So we've been hearing a lot about, about these watersheds and about a lot of private groups who, who want to kind of beef up the aquaculture. And we've got a pretty robust aquaculture program already in place here in Barnstable. We do, we do, and it's, but it's very much focused at this point on um, you know, the harvesting of those for consumption, whether it be commercial or residential. So um, I think what we're seeing now are groups emerge that would like to see us develop an aquaculture program that's also focused on um, getting pilot programs in place that aren't open for harvesting. Um, and utilizing them for a, 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 you know, multiple purposes. Uh, you know, first of all, to study pilot areas to understand how much nutrient uh, the, the oysters will absorb. And we've been talking with three bays now for you know, a decade about this opportunity. And most recently, they've approached us. I met with them last week, um, wanting to do a public-private partnership in developing this to another level, not just not just so that they can be harvested by commercial and you know residential permit holders, but that we develop a program that puts in place a larger number of oysters out there. Um, specifically, they're they're asking for a pilot program this spring in North Bay, um, and they've come to the table as they always have in the past. They've been wonderful partners on many efforts um, with money and with resources to assist the town in doing this. Now, um, I went from that meeting to a meeting with Tom Marcotti, which is always, if you have the opportunity to speak with Tom Marcotti, he is such a wealth of knowledge, and he, and he, you know, he knows his program so well. So we spent about an hour and a half together. I, I learned you know, uh, oyster, oystering 101 from Tom, and it was very helpful for me to understand, okay, what's it gonna take to actually go out there and not only run a pilot program that we would monitor mm. and, and we would be able to you know, drive information, um, but also to begin a propagation program so that we are growing more oysters so that we can begin to expand this aquaculture program you know, to, to many of our bays. And it can't just be done randomly. It's got to be done systematically. There are many factors to this, not just you know, having the resources in place to grow them, but also the appropriate place to put them. We have state regulations that, that kick in because obviously if people know that there are shellfish some there, they are going to want to harvest them. They and are. that's what they're used to. And in many cases, the places where we would need to be doing these pilot programs or even a, a more expanded program than a pilot program, they wouldn't be focused on harvesting. We'd have to relay them and put them into areas afterwards that would be harvested. So that creates some new challenges. Um, the, one of the biggest, obviously, is um, managing that from, a you know, from, from having more um, officers out there to make sure that people weren't violating that, that um, you know, no harvesting 
situation when a shellfish area is closed. So. Absolutely, and you know, it's interesting when I think about this, I think to, to the layman, it, it says, well, what's so complicated? Let's just, you know, propagate some oysters. Let's put the seeds in there and let them do their thing. But of course, you do need to monitor it and you need to control the conditions and make sure that it is favorable to have the oysters grow and also to be able to, to take a look at the water quality and say, is this actually working? Absolutely, and to also understand you know, the biology that exists there, meaning the life that's there, and, and are there different, um, you know, are, are there different organisms that might just kill off an oyster population? And um, Tom knows where that has existed historically, and maybe we shouldn't be trying to put oysters there for one reason or another, but there are other areas where it would work wonderfully. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. Absolutely. And of course, you know, it's not just here in Barnstable. It's something that we can look at Cape wide. And as we're looking at, at um, the, the watershed issue, the, the, the 208 plan, all of that, when we're looking at at dealing with these issues, is it something that, that you've been talking with other towns that, that we're looking yes. at collaborations and, and public-private partnerships perhaps for this sort of thing? Absolutely, and, and I think you know the most recent that we've talked about um, is with Mashby and Sandwich and looking at Pompanesset Bay, and I know I spoke about this the last time I was in on your show and I briefed the town council on it, but the watershed legislation that's out there that allows us now to look you know, beyond our own town boundary at partnering with other communities and then looking at what the sources of these nutrients are and looking at being able to get credits for what we're calling non-traditional approaches. Traditional would be you want to remove nutrients, you do some sort of wastewater, hard wastewater solution, like a treatment facility or, or, or something of that nature. The other side, these non-traditional approaches are things like aquaculture, fertilizer regulation, some of these um, impermeable barriers that they have out there that might stop the movement of the nutrient and then to a certain degree, um, you know, the permeable side of it, which is, so you, you know, the nutrient passes through but it's absorbed, so what comes out the other side isn't a problem. Um, the issue becomes, especially under this watershed permitting, uh, how do you get credit for that? Right. Because not to say that we shouldn't do any of these things because they're good for the environment, whether you get a credit or not, but we're going to be up against a challenge very soon to reduce these nutrient levels. So we want to be clear on, well, how do you get the credit for a dredge project or a, a um, shellfish propagation project that truly, naturally will reduce that nutrient level. I mean, oysters are like these unbelievable filters. I've heard like 40 to 50 gallons of water a day, each one absorbs, and so I drove out um, with Dan Santos uh, and looked at what um, they're doing on the Outer Cape, and it's just amazing. In Wellfleet, we went down there and met with the project director down there, Kurt Felix, and uh, the improvement that's, that they've seen in the bay by introducing initially hundreds of thousands, now they have millions of oysters. Um, actually, last winter, you know, wreaked havoc with everybody's oysters, but um, in general they have a wonderful oyster population and they've seen an improved water quality. But how to quantify that so we get credits so that the regulators aren't asking us to do hard solutions is what we're trying to do with Mashpee Sandwich and Barnstable. We're kind of like trying to break new ground here relative to the regulators and they're very receptive to it. So. Um, it's, it's an exciting time for this issue. It is, and I, I'm, I'm really, <coughs> I like the idea of, you know, using nature as new technology. It's, Absolutely. It's, it's kind of interesting, and I think getting people to turn around and say, okay, well, we do have things that naturally do this. We don't need, uh, you know, all of this big infrastructure. It could just be as simple as a little oyster. Uh, it, it, it will be that simple um, in, in small percentages and so we should try to accumulate all those and then see where we're at and then you've got to come up with the hard solution to, to get it down below whatever the critical loading is. But um, it's time and effort well spent. Absolutely. Well, Mark, I thank you so much for joining us here on Barnstable this morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Mark Ells, of course, our assistant town manager for Barnstable this morning.